Number 68. Based on formal charge considerations, which of the following would likely be the correct arrangement of atoms in hypochlorous acid, HOCl or OCLH? Okie dokie. So this one, it basically comes down to we have to find the formal charges, right? And there's technically two things that you got to do to find a formal charge. The first thing is you got to draw the correct Lewis structure. So I'm going to assume that we know how to draw Lewis structures or we have a basic overall general gist of them. Um, if you don't, though, go back to questions 40 through 45 in this chapter to get, you know, get them down perfect. The second thing we need to know is the formal charge formula, which I provided right here. All right. This one does not match what's in your textbook. However, I believe that this one is much easier to understand and you'll see later how we do it. So we just have to draw two hypothetical situations for hypochlorous acid, which is HOCl versus OCLH. So I'm going to say HOCl and then OCLH. So going by um, the foolproof Lewis structure method that I prepared for you guys in the you know previous questions, Follow those steps if you want to try to figure out the Lewis structure for these. So you could pause the video and try to do it yourself. I'm just going to give it to you because we've already done Lewis structures. So for HOCl, it should be an H bound to an O bound to a Cl. This O should have two lone pairs and this one should have three lone pairs. For OCLH, it's basically the same thing but reversed. So this O would be a single bond, chlorine, and H. And if you hear my dog, I'm sorry, probably the mailman's here. Who knows? He gets a little excited. But we're just going to keep rolling with it. Okay. So here are my two structures. And now we just have to do the formal charge. Well, the only thing that looks similar here is the hydrogens, right? This hydrogen and this hydrogen look exactly the same because they both have one bond attached to it and no lone pairs. So if I know the formal charge for this hydrogen, I will know the formal charge for this hydrogen. So let's figure it out. Formal charge of hydrogen is, you always start with your valence electrons, which is distinctly from the atom, and that's on the periodic table. So hydrogen has one valence electron. So one minus number of bonds. We said that this hydrogen has one bond. So that's a minus one minus number of dots or lone electrons around the hydrogen. But if I look at the hydrogen, there's, there's no lone dots or no dots in general, so it'd be zero. So one minus one minus zero is zero. So that means that this hydrogen is neutral. It's perfect. It likes to be just one bond. Next, let's do this oxygen. Formal charge of oxygen equals, now just make sure that, you know, this oxygen has two bonds, and then this oxygen only has one bond. So they will have different formal charges because they don't look identical. Valence electrons for oxygen. Oxygen has six valence electrons, so it would be six minus two bonds that it's bound to. So six minus two minus number of dots total around the atom. So one, two, three, four. So that's minus four. So if we do 6 minus 2 minus 4, we also get a neutral atom. So no charge for that one, which means that this one is going to have a charge. So let's figure it out which one it is. Formal charge for this oxygen is valence, which doesn't change. So that's still 6 minus it has one bond. So minus 1 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 dots or 6 lone electrons. 6 minus 1 minus 6 is a negative 1 charge. So that means that this is negative 1. So right off the bat, we see discrepancies. We have two neutral elements, which is perfect. Atoms want to be neutral. They don't want to have a charge. Versus a negative 1 and a neutral. So we're already seeing some differences here. Let's just figure out what the chlorine is. So this chlorine, and I'll just write it over here. Formal charge of chlorine is chlorine has a valence of seven. So that's seven minus it has one bond attached to it. So that's minus one minus one, two, three, four, 
five, six, six dots or six lone electrons. And if you do the math, that will give you a zero, zero. So this one is all neutral. This chlorine now, since it has two bonds and not just one, it's probably going to look a little different. But can you guess what charge it's going to be? In the upper right hand corner here, right, there was no charge, which means that the overall molecule has to be neutral. If the oxygen was a negative one charge, what do you think the chlorine has to be in order to give a neutral atom? It's got to be a plus one. <laughs> but we'll see, right? Let's just do the math. So I'm going to pull it down here. Formal charge of chlorine is valence was seven. This chlorine has one, two bonds. So minus two, minus one, two, three, four, four dots. And seven minus two minus four is a plus one. And there you go. So our prediction was right. Now we have to figure out what actually formal charges tell us. The more stable a compound, the less charges there are. So I'll say less charges, the better. In the one on the, in the, one on the left, they were all neutral, all zero, zero, and zero. But on the right, there was a negative one and a positive one, which means that this compound or OCLH in general is not as preferred as HOCL. So which one would be hypochlorous acid? It would be HOCL because every single atom in that molecule is neutral. It's happy. It's perfect. It's love and life. <laughs> and, you know, as opposed to OCLH, which has the oxygen being a negative one and the chlorine being a positive one. And that's the answer. So basically we just had to find the formal charge, know exactly what formal charge differences meant and know that less charge is the better. And that's how we got the answer. So thank you so much for tuning in guys. Uh, yeah. Click that subscribe button if you want to help the channel. I thank you so much. I'll see you guys on the next question. Have an awesome day. Keep studying hard. See you then.